Are you clear? Yeah, send it down. You'll take the end of your rope and roll it towards you once, roll it towards you twice, and push in that standing part right through the hole you just made. Pull that as tight as you can. And you'll take this tag end here, thread it through that loop, and collapse it right on top. Now down below, you get a stopper knot. Then give yourself some room, twist in a loop, and take your stopper knot, and we're gonna tie in a bowline. We'll pop right up, around the back, and back down. And to size this, you want the edge of this knot right up against the edge of your loop. There we go, and we'll pull it all tight. When we terminate any harness we make, it'll be through this loop with this button hook. We'll start this one on a bite, and we'll run it through the handle. And then we're gonna go around the entire thing so that we form a girth hitch around the main part of the cup. There we go. We'll take our standing end, run it back through the handle, and then we'll bring it up to loop it on top. Then the one that's left here, we're gonna wrap it around a couple times so that it doesn't slip on us. And finally, we'll run our button hook through. There we go. And this gives us a nice even handle and harness to hoist our hot chocolate. I'm not quite sure why anybody would need to do this, but uh, if you needed to, now you know how. A gallon of paint is easy to do, especially if you have a handle. You'll just run your bottom loop through, hook in your button hook, and you're good to go. Here's a close-up of what that looks like. That is not going to come undone. But if you don't trust it, definitely don't do it. Here we have an awkward shape, but we're gonna find the center of balance the best we can by taking our rope. We're gonna hook underneath, hook around the other side, and then we're going to place our standing end into our button hook. But before we close it up, we're gonna take our loop down below and include that as well. Then we'll do our button hook, and this is where we're going to adjust everything so that we get the right balance point. So here you can see it's off. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna Scoot it down, scoot it down. There we go, we're getting closer. We're not there yet. And there it is. This is why I like to leave a little tag in on my button hook because it allows me to pull it up, creating some slack and it makes it that much easier to undo. If we were using this to hoist some pipe, I would take my standing end here, give myself some room, and I'll wrap it around the pipe one, two, three times. More if you're starting to slip. But I'll take my button hook, I'll go around the top, then back around the pipe. And then from here, I would just clip into my button hook. Now what you want to do is make sure that you're nice and tight. You can see that this loop here is going around the pipe. And the more I pull, the tighter it'll get, and the more friction I'll have to hoist my pipe. Here I have three different types. It'll work all in a bundle, same thing. I'll just wrap it around one, two, three times. Now I'll go over the top, around the back, and clip in to my standing end. There we go. Want to make sure we tighten that up so that we get lots of constriction going around our pipes. Make sure that our button hook is nice and stable. There we go. And then when you want to undo it, pull your tag end, undo your button hook, and flip everything free. And it works just as well on lumber. Here we have a bag of tools. This one's easy because we have a handle. I'm just gonna go through, Clip onto my standing end. Pull it tight.
This one has a handle. I don't want to do a single point because it might tip the box sideways. So I'll start this one on a bite. I'll run it through the handle once and then twice. And then I'll take my button hook, I'll include that bite. I'll take my standing end, I'll wrap it around a couple times, and then my hook. Now what this does is spread out my grip on both sides of the handle so that I can lift it evenly and drop it down. Let's say we're trying to hoist something down, but all we have is paracord and we don't want to wear our hands. We turn to our trusty Marlin spike. What we'll do is go over the top, go around the standing end, and then we'll take this side, bring it over the top, and let our button hook come down. Now this, I've learned through you folks, is called a super munter's hitch. And that's what we're gonna to use to help ease down our box without wearing out our grip. I don't have a Halligan, but I do have this hammer and it's generally the same shape. So what I'll do is take my line, I'll go down the handle, go around the claw, over the top, around the bell, then I'd bring it back up and I'd pull in a twist and this twist is gonna go around the handle. There we go. Now my button hook is going to include both the line on the handle and my standing end. So I'll grab that, feed my button hook through, and there we go. This is my rig to hoist down my Halligan. When it lands down, same thing, unhook and then pull it free. For a box, I'll start with my button hook on top. I'll wrap it around and I'll include my line into my button hook. Then I'll go around the other side, include my line again and button everything up. There we go. Now this may need a little adjustment so that you can find the center of gravity for the box, but it's easily done. If you'd like to support my channel, you can pick up Marlin Spike or some of this Paramax at awesomeforsale.com. There's a link in the description. Thanks.